Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. I'm Dustin Cormier, and this is another episode of How to Rock a Campfire. I'd like to remind everybody that these pants are a fashion statement, not a political statement. <laughs> My girlfriend's been getting all sorts of great clothes for me to wear, uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying them. Uh, this is Friends to the End by Tom and Jerry. Uh, well, this is from the Tom and Jerry movie with music by Her Henry Mancini and lyrics by Leslie Brick Bricus. Uh, and these guys wrote this song for the old Tom and Jerry movie that came out like in the 90s or something like that. It's a movie that I loved. I don't know if anybody even knows this movie, question mark. Uh, but it's, it was like one of my favorites when I was a kid. It's so like emotional in some ways. And this song is cool because it's all about friendship. I was really big about friendship when I was young, and I still am to this day. So I'm happy to share this song. <clears throat> this is Friends to the End. Uh, it's got kind of like a real jazzy sort of feel to it. Pretty much every song except for the A and the D have sevenths in them. And you're going to see the certain A chords and D chords that are just normal. Uh, there's little phrases where all of the chords are using an E, uh, uh, like a, a ninth chord, and we're going to get there too. <clears throat> we're going to talk about the difference between a ninth chord and a seventh ad, like, well, an ad ninth chord. A ninth chord and an ath ninth are two different things. So uh, that's what we're going to be getting into today. <clears throat> Essentially, I'm going to teach the song and then I'll play it at the end. So, you know, it kind of starts with Pugsy, I think is his name, is the, the, the dog. Mm -hmm. We two, we're friends to the end. And it starts with that low voice. I guess I should say, before I start, that I'm doing this song in the key of A. Uh, you Technically, this song is in B flat. That's what I hear on YouTube when I listen through it YouTube on YouTube, which means that you can just play the song on the first fret with the capo, uh, but this song is all is very high for me. It's already too high, so whenever I do it, I do it in the key of A without the capo. But technically, it's in the key of B flat. So you would just do all these A in the key of A major, but you would put a capo on the first fret. So I'm gonna do it in A. We two, we're friends to the end. Won't, ain't we my friend? I almost did that perfect because that should have been a B7 instead of the minor 7th. So I'm just kind of showing you the guts here, folks. Uh, we start off on the climbing up in the A major scale, E, F sharp, G sharp, A on the bass. And then we go to C sharp 7th to the F sharp 7th. And then this is when this chromatic A 9th chord happens. So what you're doing here is we're going to an A 9th. Uh, we're basically playing, you know, like an E chord, but taking off the middle finger, so it's like an E seventh, and then barring that on the fifth fret, right? So this is your A major, and then you take off the, that finger, and you open up the seventh. Now take that pinky and put it on the second fret past the fifth fret, it's the seventh fret of the high E, and you've got the, the ninth chord. And what I wanted to say is that this is different from an add ninth chord. Uh, when you play, when you see a ninth, like A9 on chords, it always implies that you're also putting the seventh chord in there. This is just how, this is a music theory thing that you might just be, you know, it's nice to know. Uh, if it says add ninth, then you add the ninth without adding the seventh note. It sounds like... Lots of people play that kind of chord. You can hear it as an add ninth right now because I'm muting the seventh note. And that's like what a seventh note or an add ninth sounds like. When you add the seventh, it's got like a it's got like a Broadway kind of it's a Broadway chord as I would call it. But you're following the A ninth chromatically down to the F sharp add ninth. Uh, 
the ninth, not the add ninth, following the A ninth, down to the F sharp, and then quickly keep your pinky on the fourth fret of the E, high E string, and then bring yourself up to, it's basically like, you know, this is, you're, you're building chords here. This is a funky chord, actually. What they're landing on is called a B6-9 chord, which is just how it's written. Uh, it's got, since it's a ninth chord, it's going to have the seventh in there, right? So I'm taking off my second finger and making, I'm using my third and fourth finger to make like a seventh style, but barring the second fret, right? So that's B seventh. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking off the pinky because we know that this open note here is C sharp, which is the ninth of B. So now we know that this is a B ninth chord, essentially. Just basically open on all the second on the second fret and only your third finger is on the fourth fret of the D string. Everything else is op is the open second fret. This is a B ninth chord. Finally, we're going to add the sixth to on top of all of this as well. And what you're doing is you're just taking that fourth finger and putting it on the fourth fret of the high E string. That note is the is the sixth of B. We know that F sharp is the fifth, so G sharp is the sixth. And it has this chord. And then you go to the E ninth after that. So this is kind of how it rolls. We are friends to the end. Ain't you my friend? fries <laughs> so what you're doing there is you're gonna go to the after the E ninth uh, let's see where are we here so after the B six nine coffee and cream to the E ninth E yep E ninth because you've got the E the seventh note and the, the ninth note boy what a team and then you go to the A you never met and then this is this special little chord progression that's kind of cool uh, it's awesome jazz stuff. So you'll notice that just basically you're keeping, what you're doing is you're keeping your second finger, you're go, what we're going to is like a B flat diminished fifth add ninth. <laughs> so instead of explaining it that way, I'm just going to show you the movement of melody that's happening here. It's basically you're keeping the E note and the C sharp note in this weird B flat chord. It's almost as if you're taking the regular notes of an A chord, but you're just turning the A into B flat. It's the same chord that they use. Uh, well, I'm all up in boots. I showed up in boots and ruined your black tie fair, right? It's that same chord where basically your second finger stays on the second fret of the D string. You're, you, then you put your third finger on the second fret of the B string. You put your pinky on the third fret of the G string, which is the B flat. And then your first finger on the first fret of the A string, which is also the B flat. Right? So it's like A. And then the third and the fifth stay while the A gets lifted up to the B flat. And then you go to the B seventh. Right? You've never met two other guys compatible with steak and fries with two. Yeah, and then that's what you do there. It goes to the B seventh to the E seventh. So let's run that whole thing through here. We're two. We're friends to the end. Won't you, my friend? We kind of blend together, thinking as one. Boy, what a team! Two other guys compatible with steak and fries were two of a kind, much of a mind. We kind of blend together, thinking as one, looking for sunny sky. To the sun may turn to rain, right? So <laughs> this is kind of how this song rolls, you know, after that. We do a climb up to the D note. Uh, and this is like that little, almost like a bridge or like a, I'd call it a bridge. 
True, the sun may turn to rain. We don't mind a drop of rain, but you won't hear us complain. Doesn't help to stop the rain. Doesn't mean if we complain, causes lots of stress and strain. <coughs> We've been living in the bitter patter. Doesn't matter. Why better drive us insane? We know the weather will mend. So that's what's going on there. True, the sun may turn to D, to the E, A, A sixth, F sharp seventh, B seventh, and then E, B e flat, E, B e flat, E, 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 B e flat, E flat, E flat, E, and then you climb from the from that down, B, e, E, F sharp G. G sharp to the A. Right? So that should make sense. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing going on here, right? But you won't hear us complain. Doesn't help to stop the rain. What's the gain if we complain? Does the world stress and strain? We've been living in the bitter matter. Usually what I'll do is to get the big, just because it's such a weird big slide, I'll use my E as like a bar chord with just first finger, third finger, and then fourth finger on like the E bar chord. And then I'll just hit all the strings and that'll get me in place to that, you know? And then the rest are gonna be actual bar chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, so you'll be able to see that one actually play through the whole song. <laughs> Why let it drive us insane? We know the weather will mend. So then this last bit is not quite the same. They change it around and they do this uppity again. It's like real cool Broadway jazz chords. We know the weather will mend. Won't it, my friend? We'll weather life together. So what the heck? Here's what we recommend. It's a weird chord going on there too. This song, just the chords amaze me. <clears throat> so this song is uh, uh, this part here. We'll weather life together. So what the heck? To the key is what we recommend. So what we're doing here is we're going to a C sharp minor seventh, right? So this is our typical C sharp minor seventh here. But what you're doing is that you're taking your third finger and you're bringing it down one fret. So what this is called is a C sharp minor seventh flat fifth. Now it sounds like junk when you just play it by itself, but it's funny how music can make the resolution of a stream of melodies within these chords can make the resolution from one chord into this chord into the other chord overall sound harmonious even though if you just isolate the chord in the middle it sounds like uck, yucky it's just music is often like that things are made different in their con in the contrast from different chords <clears throat> so um we'll uh we know the weather oh man won't my friend we'll weather life together so what the heck here's what we recommend So that's basically, yeah, so that'll be all ninth chords after that. So when we go to this, <laughs> you know, it's a lot, a lot of chords in flow. But remember, that C sharp part after the, here's what we recommend, C sharp minor seventh flat fifth to the F sharp seventh, and then you just go right into the B seventh. The greatest gift in life's a friend to the E seventh, right? Which is basically your seventh chord. You actually could technically just put your second finger there. Although I find when I do an E seventh, I try to actually use the high third because the low third, uh, the high seventh, which is the third fret of the B string. That's why I was thinking that. Instead of the low seventh, because it's just too low, it's too mucky. 
it can be cool in certain circumstances, but uh, for this one, I'm just kind of go with e, however you want to do it. It's E7, it's E9. So you're doing the seventh, and then you're adding that second finger on the F sharp. It's the second fret of the high E. Right? Um, well, uh, here's what we recommend. The greatest gift in life's a friend. It's a daily dividend. Be like us and start a trend. Be friends to the end. Come on, one more time. The greatest gift. Oftentimes, you know, like I'll even just go into the regular seventh chords at a certain point just because like, you know, if you, if you feel like doing it just to get the chords out there, you don't have to do all the fancy jazz stuff. As long as you get the bones of the chords. And then, so yeah, we do this whole thing. Day is a daily, the greatest gift in life, so friend. Day is a daily dividend. Be like us and start a trend. Friends to the end, and that would kind of end it. But then they do a what's called a turnaround, right? And the, how they bu jump into it by kind of doing the same B flat diminished chord that we saw in the, in the other part, just very quick, right? So be like us and start a trend. Be friends to the end. One more time, the greatest gift. Life's a friend. Take it, pugs. It's a daily dividend. Uh huh. Be like us and start a trend. Be friends to the end. Oh, you know, come on, guys. I think you can take it for a spin. Yeah, all right. I guess I'll give it a try. Three, two, one. <laughs> so that's when Tom and Jerry start singing. And I always do a thing. They do have little in between chords here. So be like us and start a trend. Friends to the end. Uh, so it's A, F sharp seventh, B seventh, D seventh, and then stay in A, and then E. We two, we're friends to the end. And you can see the, uh, this little in between part is like Pugsy and the little bug dude, Pugsy and Frankie, are saying to Tom, hey, come on, why don't you guys sing? And then Tom's are like, okay. And I try to do both whenever I do this thing, right? <laughs> be like us and start a trend, be friends to the end. Hey, come on, guys, what do you guys think you could do this song? Yeah, alright, I guess I can give it a shot. We two, we're friends to the end. Point me, my friend. <laughs> you guys see what I'm getting at here? Of course, this song. All there, there's a lot going on in this song. I'm surprised it's. I'm not surprised it's a long one. So, uh, I hope I explained it well for you guys. Now you're gonna see me do the whole thing, so you can kind of piece together what it's all actually got going on. I got this from some sheet music, and that's how I got all these funky chords going on in here. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of chords going on, so I don't know if you want to email me or something. I'll try to see if I can, like, get it to you. <laughs> or just look it up on one of the many musical notation sites that are out there. I got one from that has the musical notation, and it has the chords. That's for me as a guitar player, that's what I'm looking for. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This is Friends to the End <clears throat> from the Tom and Jerry movie. We two, we're friends to the end Ain't we my friend? We kind of blend together Coffee and cream Boy, what a team You never met two other guys Compatible as steak and fries We're two of a kind Much of a mind We'll find our way Searching for sunny skies True, the sun may turn to rain We don't mind a drop of rain But you won't hear us complain Doesn't help to stop the rain What's the gain if we 
complain Causes lots of stress and strain We've been living in the pit of the pattern It doesn't matter Why let it drive us insane? We know the weather will never Won't it, my friend? We'll weather life together So what the heck? Here's what we recommend Oh, come on, I think you guys can give this one a roll. All right, well, I guess we'll give it a shot. We two, we're friends to the end. Won't we, my friend? We kind of blend together coffee and cream. Oh boy, what a team. You never met two other guys. Compatible with steak and fries. We're two of a kind. Much of a mind. We'll find our way together, thinking as one, searching for sunny skies. True, the sun may turn to rain, we don't mind a drop of rain, but you won't hear us complain. Doesn't help to stop the rain, what's the gain if we complain? Causes lots of stress and strain, we've been living in the bitter pattern. around the part in the movie where the, like those bad guys come over and they're just like how about a punch right in the lunch <laughs> i love that movie it's fucking sick uh so anyway <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed that uh yeah so you know i think this is a great song you can, usually you would do it with two people if anybody ever feels like resurrecting this i'd love to hear if you did it and if my thing helped you uh, I think it caters well to a sing-along kind of thing. But, you know, it's meaty chords. It's kind of an ambitious song. But for jazz people, it's nothing. And it's uh, a classic tune that I thought I'd show you guys that, you know, you can find chords for songs from movies that you'd never think because they're so orchestral. You'd never think you can acoustify them. But then you look up the chords and, oh, look at that. I know all those chords. So I hope this song kind of showed you guys a bit of that. I'm Dustin Cormier, doing another acoustified song, uh, and this is How to Rock a Campfire. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys on the next monthly episode.